Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show, where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. And as always, the goal of our team here at Semax Financial Group is to help you focus more on your life and less on your money. Now, as a reminder, check with your current advisor, planner, CPA, and read our disclosure in the video description below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content. And by the way, if you have questions or need a 15-minute free consultation, please visit Semax.com or call 336-856-0080. Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Landon. I'm joined by Michael Sellers. We are both CFPs and financial advisors here at Semax Financial Group. And today we're going to talk about something that uh, you've probably heard of, but uh, you may not know the exact steps to go in. So I think it helps to start at the top. But today we're going to talk about some income strategies, some income tips, some income strategies. Now, number one is you got to have a budget. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, and, and you could just say, OK, budget, we're done. Right. But when it comes to having a budget in retirement, those figures are going to change a little bit. And I think it's important to look at it with a critical eye and say, what are my current expenses? What are my needs? Am I still saving? Am I not? Uh, something that I think with having a budget that's more interesting or challenging for a lot of folks in retirement is you've saved your whole life and now you're in a point where you're starting to spend. And it can be more difficult to spend those funds than you might think because you have this, this thought in the back of your head that I, I can't spend. What if I'm not going to have enough? Having a budget, knowing what you're spending, where it's going and where it's coming from can really free you up from a lot of that concern and that risk. So if you don't have a budget, that's really the place that I would say you need to start. Right. Uh, good point, Matt. And, uh, you know, part of the budget is you're going to have some essential expenses every month. Right. Just like anyone else, just like when you're working, uh, you know, food, shelter, clothing, <laughs> utilities, things of that nature. So uh, a lot of times we like to structure those essential budget items with guaranteed income sources in retirement. And by guaranteed income sources, we're talking social security, uh, pensions, annuity income, things of that nature. Right, so when we, when we talk about that, if you say my budget is 3,000, social security is giving me 1,500, mm -hmm. my pension is giving me 500, well, we still have a $1,000 gap there, right? So what you're saying is whether it's an annuity or something else, figuring out how are we going to create that $1,000 a month of reliable income? Right. That predictable income is so important to, you know, just understand how that's going to work for you and how it may not work for you 20 years from now. So along with that predictable income, the third thing that you really need is a balanced portfolio. Now, the way you can think about this is the funds that you allocate towards that predictable income, think about that as the foundation. That's the base of your home. This is what you know is your foundational income producing assets. So your social security is kicking off money every month. If you have a pension, it's kicking off money every month. If you have an annuity that's, that's creating cash flow, it's kicking off. If you have dividend paying stocks or, or a bond portfolio, you've got some allocation of funds that are producing regular income. But then beyond that, you might have, just hypothetically, let's say you have a million dollars saved for retirement. 450 might be down there in that base. Well, the remaining 550, we still have to do something with. Part of a balanced portfolio is saying, okay, these are funds we can allocate a little bit more growth to. We can have a little bit more opportunity for higher earnings because we're not relying on that money today. Now, uh, Michael, I'm going to put you on the hot spot for just one moment here. Uh, when you were 24 years old, you're working, you're putting into your 401k. Yeah. How closely were you paying attention to what it was doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, not at all. <laughs> Why? He had his income taken care of. Yeah. So that's where if you're balanced appropriately, you can take not an undue amount of risk, but a appropriately balanced portfolio with the appropriate allocation towards risk, that's going to keep you from suffering the effects of inflation down the road. That's going to address potential tax concerns. What if taxes go up? That base income you need, that budget you have, is probably going to need a raise. We all like a raise. You should build your raises into your own retirement income plan as well. So, yes, having that, that balanced approach on some securities and investments to grow is a good inflation hedge. Um, and you did mention tax considerations as well. Um, that's something as you get into it, um, though there's different buckets of money that you can draw from. And uh, of course, tax uh, implications become even more important during retirement uh, almost than when you're working. 
And with those tax implications, it's not just for you or potentially you and your spouse, but also your kids, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're doing that income planning, I feel like the less we give Uncle Sam, the better, legally. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So um, the last thing we have here is to revisit target risk and income annually. And, and I'm, I'm going to make you close us out here. Why, why would you right. say we need to do that? Well, your, your risk tolerance may change over time if there's significant changes in your life, even during retirement. Um, you know, you may want to adjust the risk and just monitor things. Um, obviously, as, as markets change and stocks go up, bonds go up, they may go up in different percentages. And so every once in a while, just revisit where you are, how you're allocated between stocks and bonds, essentially, uh, taking into account that predictable income that you do have uh, and adjust it accordingly, and just use that opportunity to rebalance your portfolio to maybe raise future cash for income needs. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, uh oh, these guys at Semax have put a plan for me together. We've done this. We're, we're good. Great. No problems. But if you're looking at it saying, well, it's been a while since I've looked at my income plan. I think there's some things that have shifted or I've never put one together. Or even there at the very beginning, I don't have a budget. Or maybe I've got the income taken care of, but those tax considerations for me and my loved ones is something that's, that's of higher importance now than it has at any point. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would love to visit with you, have a connection. Uh, we can do that over Zoom. We can do it over the phone. We can do it in person. We're, we're open to all resources available. But on behalf of Michael Sellers, myself, and the whole team here at Semax, we thank you for the opportunity to help. We hope you found this helpful and have a wonderful day.